E360 TV proudly presents Messages of Inspirational Stories TV Show. Live streaming now to millions of devices around the world on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, YouTube Live, Facebook Live Streaming. Our shows are available video on demand on these channels. And we broadcast daily Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on these channels. On Mondays, Expanding Your Business. Tuesdays, Finding Health Naturally. Wednesdays, Mentoring Our Youth. Thursdays, Pets We Love. And on Fridays, Women in Leadership. Brought to you by our producers and hosts, Jim Grant and Donna Guinwa. Along with our host, Bieta Severin Reed and Emerson Brantley. Supported by our admin team of Michaela Vidal and Gaia Guinwa Balcone Weda. Oh, and welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The Messages of Inspirational Stories is proudly brought to you by the good guys at the 6 webinar.com. Also, our good friend, Mr. Bill Heinrich, The Seven Levels of Truth. Uh, we want to thank him so much for being a part of our show. And today, ladies and gentlemen, on Natural Health, we're going to be talking about uh, something that's very, very, very important. As you can see there on the marquee, we're going to be talking about suicide. That seems like an odd topic for natural health. But our guest today, Mr. Joel Peterson, he's going to join because we share some great information where suicide is just not, you know, in our heads. It's down inside our bodies. And this has been an eye opening experience for me because in our family, Suicide has affected us not once, but twice. The first time was a cousin of mine. The second time was my beloved son-in-law. So ladies and gentlemen, let me bring the beard of knowledge on Mr. Joel Peterson. He describes himself as the professional patient. There's a reason for that. And let's say hello to Joel. Hey, Joel, how you doing, brother? Hello, Jim. Thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here because this this particular show is going to go out to a lot of different veterans groups. I'm going to post it on the Veterans VFW and also the American Legion because the topic here is extremely, extremely important. Normally, uh, well, Joel, let me give you a moment just to introduce yourself a little bit. I don't want to be rude and hog all the time. Yeah, uh, I'm a Marine. I volunteer with Dr. William Clearfield here in Reno, Nevada. And he's the doctor that saved my life when the VA mm -hmm. couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Um, in 2015, I got down to 135 pounds. And basically, the VA said I was okay. I just needed to eat more. And my mom moved in to feed me by hand, keep me alive. And this is when I experienced the most suicidal ideation in my life. Mm. Um, you feel like you're a burden. You know, your mom has to leave her husband to come and feed you by hand. You feel like you're just a burden. Yeah. And I was mad at God, to say the least. But mm. I have this belief that if I kill myself, I'd have to come back and do it all over. And it would be even worse. Mm. It's kind of like kind of like a Buddhist philosophy. Yeah. Uh, so that was part of one of the main reasons I didn't kill myself. And then Thank cannabis, God. cannabis was probably the second part. I mm -hmm. no longer taken that after all the therapy I've done, but I broke away from the VA and I went to a doctor of osteopathic medicine because I started to go to whole mm -hmm. foods, to get good food. And I started to learn about the corruption in Big Pharma, to be just be blunt. And yes. uh, allopathic ways can be dangerous and mm -hmm. guided towards pills. So mm -hmm. a lot of people end up seeing DOs like myself. And that's when Dr. Mm -hmm. Clearfield found out my hormones were off 
and he did acupuncture twice a week for Mm -hmm. probably about a year. And Mm -hmm. once the testosterone hit me, it was like night and day. I got my heat back, got my color back. Mm -hmm. People even noticed it. It it just absolutely saved my life. And you actually got your hair growing back, and that just that's why you got that full beard there, man. Oh man. That's a that's a that's a celebration for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's why that's part of why I started to grow it because it just kept growing. Mm-hmm. I never yeah. was able to grow a beard before. I didn't even have to shave that much. Wow. Yeah, that's and amazing. I, didn't have, I, I also didn't have a lot of hair on my legs or my chest, and I just thought mm-hmm. I was normal that way. And now it's actually growing back on my legs and my mm. chest. Well, we'll take your word for that on your legs and your chest yeah, there. You know? <laughs> but realistically, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the suicide of, when I'm, of my nephew, it's questionable. But uh, authorities did not investigate. It happened in the early, uh, either late 58 or 59, somewhere along in there. And... Uh, I'm sorry, it was 62 when it happened, excuse me. And then when my son-in-law, prior to him committing suicide, he had, he had suffered a traumatic brain injury. And, uh, I mean, he played football in high school uh, with Emmett Smith. They were on the same team. Mark graduated in, uh, I think it was 80, 88. And Emmett graduated in 89, I think it was. And... Uh, <clears throat> or somewhere along in there, I forget, it might have been 86 and 87. But anyway, uh, Mark played football at the uh, Florida State University. He tore up his knee at in his football career. Then he, he was in a very severe car accident. And he lost, uh, uh, he had a lesion on his brain, lost part of his memory. He couldn't remember what he did for a living. And he was fine, but over a period of time, this Uh, disease that was labeled chronic CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Uh, He would get very, very confused and he just felt his world closing in. And I just like to humbly say for anyone that's been through that, it's a horrible experience for the family because when people come over to visit with the family at that time, nobody knows what to say. Not the visitors, not the family. It'd be much different if he died from a disease like cancer, if he had a heart attack, or if he was killed in an automobile accident. But it was such a taboo subject. And I'm going to give a shout out to my daughter, Lisa Manella, because Lisa did not take the ostrich approach and put her head in the sand. She became a a, a spokesperson and, and has talked to many people about the trauma involved with suicide because the family feels guilty, just like you were talking about earlier, Joe, uh, Joel, that how you felt guilty. And it, it's a horrible thing. But in working with Joel over the last several months, years, we've known each other a few years now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Joel is going to share some information because I always thought suicide was 100 percent mental. And Joel is going to share a lot of information with you about that. So, Joel, I'm just going to hush up because you're the subject matter expert. You're the beard of knowledge, as I like to call you, and let you just start where you would like to. And we'll just roll with that, sir. I started to volunteer, like I said, with Dr. William Clearfield. And at the same time, I volunteered at the VA. I just started helping vets. I just started showing up and helping vets and Mm -hmm. telling them telling them my story, how this doctor saved my life. And you might want to get a private second opinion, you know, and then the people at the VA noticed me helping there, but not on an official role. And they wanted me to sign mm-hmm. up officially. So I joined the veterans mental health council and then the family and advisory uh, veterans and family advisory council, two different uh, councils. And I found out about that 22 a day suicides Mm. Veteran. And it just, it, it, it really, really floored me. Yeah. I, Cause I was sick before that. Um, and I wasn't paying attention to that. And I think I'd heard a little something about it, but when it, when I had heard that 
14 of the 22 don't use the VA. Maybe mm -hmm. that even stumped me more because it was just, it's both sides of it. It's not just the VA. We can't blame it on one thing. Mm -hmm. We're now, we're now down to 17 a day is what the official statistic is. But here's the kicker. Two colleges just did a study in eight states mm -hmm. and they said it was more like 44 a day. Wow. Yeah. And that was just eight states. And these were two high level colleges. I think it was funded by the NIH or the government. And it was mm. a pretty powerful study because they don't really, the, the, like uh, OD with codeine or, uh, you know, oxycontins, they might mm -hmm. consider a, a overdose and not mm -hmm. an intentional overdose. What we believe most of them actually are. Mm -hmm. I understand. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there on the marquee, you can see Joel Peterson is his name. He's nicknamed here on the show as the Beard of Knowledge. But Joel is so sincere in help, reaching out and helping vets. He's got his personal email address there, joel at 67 at gmail.com. And his phone number is 775-384-7063. So if you or someone that you know would like to reach out to Joel, please do. And while you're, while you're talking there, you know, it, it amazes me being a Vietnam veteran. I, I really appreciate what you said there because uh, Dr. Clearfield, I'm going to put his marquee up here if I can find it. So, but we want to give him good credit too, because he's done a lot of work and Joel, let's let's go through your journey of where, you know, you were at the point of just feeling like you were a burden. You were at the point where you felt like uh, I wanted to die, even, you even though to I, die. Die. I wanted to die. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was and, a thing. and there was a little there's a little bit of a story how you came in contact or found Dr. Clearfield. Would you share that with us, please, sir? Actually, it was through um, uh, Whole Foods. The people there were helping me out with my nutrition and supplements because mm -hmm. I was so sick. And in the back of a little magazine had Dr. Clearfield's name. It, it was it was what you would call the woo-woo doctors. That's the Federicas yeah. people. That's the Reiki people. That's the the energy healers. It's, you know, the chiropractors, the acupuncturists, mm -hmm. the specialists. And I found him. And I, I, some reason I trusted it and it said VA accredited and he, ne he said he never put that there. He don't know. And we never were able to find it again. Ironically. I'd be doggone. So that's how I got to Dr. Clearfield and I started um, volunteering with him a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I got, I, I found out probably through YouTube about Dr. Mark L. Gordon, Dr. Mark L. Gordon calls himself an interventional endocrinologist. Dr. Clearfield's an endocrinologist and a DO. Mm -hmm. and Dr. Gordon came up with a traumatic brain injury, two-part CD and a book on how to treat traumatic brain injury through mm -hmm. your neurosteroidal uh, hormones in your brain, BDNF, mm -hmm. brain-derived neurotropic factor. So this is where we started to, uh, we got the book for Dr. Clearfield and a respiratory therapist um, came to us. Mm. And this gentleman, he was in bad shape, night mm -hmm. sweat, losing his marriage, mm. um, anger, just, just heart palpitations, all the sickness that most of us experience when you're just losing it and you don't know what's going mm. on. And so Doc ordered labs on him. And we were going to start the TBI process. And a couple of days later, we get a phone call. He tried to kill himself. So that's when Doc pulled me in. He's like, okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And so over the next few years, I started to study as much as I can in relationship to the gut and the mm -hmm. heart and the brain. And mm -hmm. now we believe there's neurites in the gut and neurites in the heart. And these neurites mm -hmm. are the communication channels to the neurites that are in the brain and when those get disrupted it disrupts the hormones in the brain hmm. and we we believe this is where 
the suicidal ideation, the depression and the anxiety starts to ramp up yeah. and the body's natural tendency is to overcome what's happening. Mm-hmm. So a lot of us will dampen that down with alcohol or cannabis or other things, sex, uh, uh, other addictions. Hmm. And it just makes things worse. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. talk a little bit about Dr. Clearfield. His, his website there is drclearfield.net. He's located in Reno, Nevada, but Dr. Clearfield has patients uh, out, even out of state. Yes. Correct. And you can actually, um, I'm, I'm going to let you explain the procedure, but if someone's, uh, say, Orlando, Florida, and they say, wow, I'd like to get in touch with this Dr. Clearfield, and I'd like to have him do some tests on me, but I don't want to go from Florida to Nevada. How would that work? Would you be kind enough to explain that, sir? You could reach out online and say you'd like an appointment. You can call our office. Mm -hmm. And what he would do is email you a lab slip. And you you would take the lab slip to your local lab core or quest or whatever type of um, lab you got and do your labs. And then we get the results online and he Mm -hmm. can do it Zoom over over the zoom and uh, diagnose you that way. Mm. That's a wonderful thing because uh, you're able to get your, the information that Dr. Clearfield needs and on a zoom call, he can go over that information with you. Right. And uh, it's one of those deals, ladies and gentlemen, because I've, I've been familiar with working uh, with Joel, working with Dr. Clearfield. He's been with him for eight years now. And uh, I've learned a lot about this hormone because normally guys don't think of hormones. We normally think of ladies and hormones. But, you know, just uh, last week or the week before, I went to see my mechanic. And Alan has a, has his own repair shop. And Alan looked really good. I said, man, you look great. I said, what are you doing? He said he had went to a DO, a doctor of osteopathic. and right. They checked him out. They started putting him on hormones, got his hormones balanced. His energy level went up and you could see it. I mean, I didn't know what was going on. I just looked at him because I hadn't seen him about a year or so. And uh, I kind of went, whoa, man, you look great. How you doing? You know, and um, it's just amazing. So uh, I believe it's the number one cause. mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, also. Also, too, if I may butt in, please, um, I was uh, I follow a lot of cardiologists and natural doctors and, you know, listen to them and that sort of thing. And they, too, were saying that the gut, having a leaky gut being a problem, how it seeps out, you know, toxins and stuff into your system, but getting the gut balanced and using hormones and of course, I'm interested in, in dandelion because it because of the benefits it does for the body. Do your own research on that. Make the right decision for you. Talk it over with your medical doctor before you start anything, especially if you're taking medication. That is critical. Very, very critical. And uh, he was talking about how the if you get the gut in harmony, I guess he said, or something like that. It helps with your heart. And see, Joel is talking about getting the hormones, getting your gut, getting your gut health improved, your heart health will improve, and your mental state will improve. And you don't need, um, well, I won't, I won't say that, but it's a, it's a more safer, natural way for your body to heal itself on the inside. I can say that. And because that's been proven many, many times. I honestly believe look, we lose 130 people a day in America due to suicide. Mm. And out of that, 70% are white males. Mm. Okay, so I think this ties into the military, the police, mm-hmm. the firefighters, the EMT. Yes, yes. And, and even the ladies. Because yeah. the ladies. The ladies' hormones can get thrown off also, just like the men's mm-hmm. can. Mm-hmm. We have active duty military that come into our office and their hormones are thrown off. 
Wow. And they're exercising, they're eating the meals, they're doing it. People have to understand what's going on in America nowadays with the genetically modified food, with mm. the electromagnetic frequencies and the electromagnetic radiation. Mm -hmm. We've got massive toxins, toxicants, mycotoxins. We've got a lot of chemicals. We put a lot mm -hmm. of stuff on our body. Mm -hmm. We've been on, a lot of us have been on pills. A lot of us have been heavily vaccinated, especially the military, mm -hmm. police, firefighters. And so when you just throw all that together, it really disrupts the hormones. And oh, most yeah. people don't know what an endocrinologist is or a mm -hmm. DO. So they mm -hmm. go to a what we call an allopathic medical doctor, an MD. And they think that the MD is supposed to solve everything. Mm -hmm. But you need to understand that an endocrinologist is the one who specializes in the hormones. And there's mm -hmm. a range for your testosterone between 250 to like 950. And mine was at 256. And so mm. they said they said that that was okay. Doc wants you to be around 500, 600. If you're active, yeah. if you're a police, fireman, something like that, mm -hmm. you might want to be around 800. You know, you yeah. want a little higher. So mm -hmm. that it depends. But if you start going under 400, you're in trouble. And we believe yeah. it's one of the number one causes, believe it or not, of heart attacks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely oh, yeah. amazing. It's absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. I, I I wish that every single suicide had an autopsy. I I mean I think if they wanted to find out why they would right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit more about that because normally we think about suicide, we normally think about veterans and things like that. But you know, a lot of people don't realize the stressful jobs that people do out there. Uh, you mentioned doctors, you mentioned, uh, you know, people who have just everyday jobs. And if their hormones and often the stress is there, um, it can upset them tremendously, it can throw their emotions and everything totally out of balance. So we want to make sure that, uh, you know, it's just not a military thing. I remember 1970 when I came back from Vietnam. I never heard of uh, anything. There was no one there for us. And society in that, in that day and time was kind of like, hey, <laughs> get with it. How come you're not happy? What's wrong with you? You know, and uh, it, it's just amazing how, you know, we have come so far. Now, also, too, Joel, I want you to share this. Medical doctors go to school and to become interns and all that, but it's a longer process for a DO, isn't it? Correct. They go four more years. Mm -hmm. They do nutrition and supplements, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a huge difference. Yeah. And I want to throw some phone numbers out there real quick just in case. Okay. I see, I see this in other venues. Sometimes when you – talk about stuff like this that can trigger people mm -hmm. and sure every most people know about the national suicide prevention lifeline mm -hmm. that number is 1-800-273-TALK and that's 8255 there's also a backup number 1-800-784-2433 and then for the deaf it's a 1-800 number 799-4889 and the new national suicide number is now 988, and you can text it. But they also have a crisis text line, 741 741. Mm -hmm. And then you have, um, and you can call for emotional support. Mm -hmm. If you're in a crisis or you're having emotional problems, you, you don't have to be suicidal to call the suicidal hotline. Right. You can right, call right. for just emotional support. If you are overwhelmed and you are stressed, and you feel like things are just, you can call them. The Yellow Ribbon Suicide Prevention Program is to help parents get resources. The Substance mm -hmm. Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, their number is 1-800-662-4357. Now, doctors and medical personnel, they have a physician support line that most of them don't know about, one 888 409 zero one four one and that's from 8 a.m till 1 a.m only eastern time then you've got nami the national um, alliance on mental illness 
Their mm -hmm. number is 1-800-950-6264. Mm -hmm. And you can text NAMI to the 741-741 also. Um, www.bark.us is a suicide awareness and prevention resources for parents also. And they monitor online stuff to look for um, activities of hurting yourself or suicidal this or suicidal packs and so forth. Mm -hmm. According to the American Psychiatric uh, Association, the five top indicators they believe that lead to suicidal ideation is feeling sad, angry, and not yourself, mm -hmm. using drugs, alcohol, food, or sex to cope. You've mm -hmm. lost someone or something important to you. Mm -hmm. Something traumatic has happened in the past or recently, and it can go back years, too. It could be even childhood oh, yeah. stuff you haven't dealt oh, yeah. with. You can't do the things you'd like to do. And then we, there's also an American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. They're pretty huge, to be honest. And then I have, it looks like around in 2020, 116 police uh, killed themselves and 127 oh. firefighters and EMTs killed themselves. Mm. And you're more likely to die by suicide as a police fireman or an EMT than you are in, on the line of duty. Wow. And my friend in Texas, he's a uh, EMT, a helicopter EMT. Mm. And that's for a children's hospital. Ooh. Yeah, he's he's. You know, he sees stuff. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bad. Yeah, yeah it really is. And I, on a previous show, I mentioned about a uh, nurse that served in the Tainan area that we both served in Tainan, Vietnam. And I did not know her there. Uh, and we were there at the same time. But uh, she would talk about, she was a, a, a surgical nurse, and uh, she would uh, talk about sometimes that she could take a shower and not need any water just from the tears rolling down her face. And that was all the trauma that they saw. So, you know, I've got Joel's, uh, the Beard of Knowledge, his, his email address there, his phone number is there. If you know of someone, if it's you or someone else, please reach out to Joel. He can steer you in the right direction. He can, he's got a lot of information, just like he shared hotline numbers and all that. And he can get you in touch with Dr. Charles, uh, Dr. Clearfield, excuse me, <clears throat> and get the ball rolling. Don't let this eat you up because this is a suicide is a horrible thing. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's sad when someone is at a state of mind when they feel like there is no tomorrow. Joel has been there. He felt like that. And now he knows there is a tomorrow because he's seen yesterday. I think King Tut said that. I know tomorrow because I've seen yesterday. But he knows there is a tomorrow. And there's a bright light at the end of the tunnel. So this is why we want to cover this subject here on this show. And we want people to reach out and take control. And, you know, Joel, it just amazes me how I found out so much about DOs uh, it, as a direct relationship and friendship with you. And many times you've been on the show. My goodness gracious, that is a total door opener. I've got an appointment with a, with a DO here locally. And uh, fortunately, they're in the same system I'm in. But let's go a little bit now to the VA. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the VA used to be backwoodsy. I remember when I came back in Vietnam, I had, had a little kink in my neck. And when you come back in, you know, do you want to go to the see the doctor? Or you want to go get a cold beer? Well, that's not real hard for someone that was 21 years of age. I turned 21 in 1969. And my point being is that I went on sick call because I had a real bad pinched nerve in my neck. I could hardly turn my head like this and the nerves would just pull, you know, and it was very uncomfortable. And what they prescribed to me in 1970 was muscle relaxers. And all muscle relaxers would do for me. If someone asked me what time it was, I'd go, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, and I look at my watch and, you know, I just couldn't, just couldn't do it. And it would take me a while to do it. So then I went to a chiropractor 
And he adjusted my neck. He said, you're going to be a little sore for a few days, but I'll get that out. But I felt better after the adjustment. And it was sore for a few days, but it, it went away. And man, I was so glad because I share that story with you because the VA used to be back woodsy, as Joel mentioned briefly a little earlier. But now, Joel, they're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, aren't they? Yeah, they've definitely improved their game. And a new law just took an effect. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's already in effect. Any veteran, whether you're receiving services or not, can now step into any VA and say, I'm suicidal, I need help, and they won't turn you away. It yeah. didn't, used, didn't used to be that way, but now mm -hmm. they will help you out. They will absolutely help you out. And their VAs, just like any hospital, they have their goods and their bads, but they've really mm -hmm. ramped up their mental health game. They've ramped up their family, uh, <clears throat> and veteran, and, veteran and Family Advisory Council Board, so they've created environments where they're now serving veterans in many different levels. And then I also got into the recreational therapeutic program. And people mm -hmm. don't understand how powerful this is. For instance, at our VA in Reno, we have the Reno Veteran Photography Group. We mm -hmm. have an art group. We have a leather group. We have a guitar group. We go out on field trips. I mean, it, it, when you we haven't lost a single veteran in any of those groups to suicide. That is fantastic, because that's one of the keys, too, because if you're a veteran or if you're, you know, whatever your profession is, if you are struggling and you feel alone, please reach out, find help, because there's someone there on the other side of that phone that's been there, just like Joel has been there. He's done it. He can understand where you're coming from. That's so critical. And uh, it's and just something. Go ahead, sir. And I've been trained. They call it the, the living works, 40 years of building hope. It's the applied, I always forget the name, applied suicide intervention mm -hmm. skills training. It's known as assist. So we're able to assist law enforcement, talk someone down in a, an actual attempt. Like let's say they want to jump off a bridge. And mm -hmm. the, the, cops, the cops aren't trained really to do that. So they'll bring in and assist suicide specialists that can come in and we're, we're taught how to talk the person down. And keep wow. Them. Yeah. That's, it's, that's it's, amazing. It's, it's but also classes. Yeah. Also too, at the VA, they have ramped up their mental health program, but now uh, there's, they, they allow, they've expanded their area of consideration when it comes to the medical practice. And um, I think you hit on that uh, on a previous show uh, about how now they have acupuncturists in some of them or, you know, yeah. just just share that with us, please. Yeah, it, it, they call it the whole health concept. And so they have brought in acupuncturists and chiropractors now to some VAs if, if available. And it's it's life changing. If you ask me, just the fact that they're reaching out to that type of environment. Mm. So. When, when me and Dr. Clearfield first started and I went to the VA and I asked him to do his labs, they literally just said no. And the endocrinologist did not like it. And because I do, I do bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. I don't do the depot testosterone, which is a mm -hmm. synthetic testosterone. Mm -hmm. We believe, me and Dr. Clearfield, we believe that the synthetic testosterone can cause blood problems, cholesterol mm -hmm. problems, um, high blood pressure problems. It, it, it can change some things. And we've noticed that the BHRT doesn't do as bad. But mm -hmm. I kid you not, the VA endocrinologist, this is what he told me. We know it does those things, but because we know that it does those things, we think it's safer. Wow. I kid you not. I'm like, man. Mm -hmm. So that's the type of stuff you've got to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, but it... it can be about a hundred to one hundred and twenty-five to one hundred and fifty dollars every month and a half to for the um, testosterone and the needles. And mm -hmm. some people go into the doctor's office and they don't like to give themselves a shot, so they go to him. Mm -hmm. And usually, a lot of people go once a week. But if you're dealing with immune issues or health issues, or mm -hmm. you've got multiple 
with traumatic brain injuries like myself. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided to go twice a week because it's more of a stabilization and not. Mm -hmm. It's better for the half life. Oh yeah. And then, uh, and we also have pellets, and pellets last anywhere from three to five months, and they're more bioidentical hormone than actually the um, uh, testosterone is. The, hmm. the, the liquid. That's amazing. Also, too, I want to go back to something uh, we were talking about, Doctor Clearfield at drclearfield.net. I'll put his uh, uh, marquee up again. But uh, let me ask you a question. I don't think we've covered this in a previous show. Let's, let's use the example of someone over in Orlando, Florida, and they want to get in touch with Dr. Clearfield. We know the procedure. They would He would send him an email for a lab, lab test, and he has access to the lab test. Now, for the physical treatment for shots or hormones or anything like that, if someone wants to be treated uh, in Florida rather than going to, you know, Nevada, how does that work? Or would you, ex would you share that with us, sir? We would, s that's a great question. We would send the needles and the testosterone to you. Mm -hmm. and you'd be giving yourself your own shots. Now mm -hmm. that, that really is a good question. If we need to find you a doctor, Dr. Clearfield belongs to A4M, AMMG. Uh, we've got the AOA, the AMA, and <clears throat> they've got their websites with doctor locators. So we mm. could help. We could even help assist in finding you a doctor that can do that. And I don't know if there's technicians in your own hospital that can do that type of stuff. I, I that's, that's a great, I'll have to ask Dr. Clearfield. How, how would we handle that? Okay. All right. Also to, uh, when you say giving yourself a shot, what where would that be? Would that be like in your arm or in your vein or how would that some work? Do, no, some do your arm. Some do, uh, the side, I do the side of my leg. Uh, mm -hmm. some, some that come in, uh, have, Christy, our MA, our nurses do it in the rear end, mm -hmm. the buttocks. Um, mm -hmm. Some people don't want to see the shot. It, yeah, just, that's me. <laughs> and you do have intramuscular and then subcutaneous. Intramuscular, usually you go straight in to the muscle. Subcutaneous, mm -hmm. you go in at an angle. The subcutaneous is in the fat layer. Mm -hmm. and intramuscular, that's why it's called intramuscular, is into the muscle. So mm -hmm. there's two different ways to do it. Yeah, I think I would uh, probably most people out there probably feel like I, I do. Set me up with a local doctor and let him let his nurse. In other words, go moon and nurse, get a shot in the old keister and you're out yep. of there. You know, that's, right. that's what I would do. And uh, in fact, I've uh, I rather have a shot in the, you know, the, the top right. uh, part of my hip than in the arm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I really had. And uh that way you don't see it coming. You just feel a little poke and <laughs> they give you the medicine and it's out of there. <clears throat> yeah. But that's a wonderful uh, opportunity for people to be able to take control of their life. And because suicide for the longest time, it was just a taboo subject, as I mentioned earlier on the, at the beginning of the show. And people don't want to talk about it. Um, in fact, uh, after we lost my son-in-law, Mark, I made a comment about, you know, uh, that I personally feel that if someone is not right up here and they end their life and they're not capable of making a balanced or sane decision, I don't think that that's going to be held against them when they commit suicide. And the in, uh, one of the individuals where they're in the family related to Mark, and he says, you know, don't use the word suicide. You right. got to use the word suicide. You can't run from the truth. Be honest because being honest is part of the healing process. It's kind of like admitting that you have a problem. So what? No one's going to look down on you. No one's going to laugh at you or, or talk behind your back. You know, just, just be honest with yourself and say, you know, I got a problem. And I don't know how to deal with it because there's people out there that they're specialists in that arena. They know how to communicate with you. 
and they can help you in your hour of need. That's why Joel gave out all those uh, phone numbers. And it's so critical. And again, let me put Joel's information up there so you can reach out to him. And if you watch this on the replay, you can actually, uh, our video on demand, because we're on Roku, you saw the channels we're on, you can stop it. But please reach out to Joel. I know him personally. In fact, one time we were going to do something and you you were not able to make it because you were actually on a suicide call. You remember that? Yes, I sure do. Yeah. I'm, because I usually, I usually stay in touch with all those that I talk with. Yeah. That's how that's how much skin that Joel's got in the game. And working with Dr. Clearfield there at drclearfield.net in over eight years, he has seen the proof and the pudding and what he's talking about. That's it's, what just inspires me so much. It's night and day. Yeah. We saw yeah. we saw that uh, respiratory therapist yesterday. Me and Doc were shopping at Home Depot and he came up. And he he just looks like night and day. He's strong, he's glowing, wow. he's cool. It's just amazing. It's yeah, he's got his, his marriage back, he's biking again, you know. So he got his life back. Yeah, yeah. He got yeah. his life back. Wow. All because of, all because of testosterone. And, and mm. when your testosterone goes down, your estrogen goes up. And it's backwards for women. But they still need the same balancing. We both do. And I believe this is the number one reason why 70% of the suicides every day are white males. Mm. It's because we're, our hormones are off. And wow. People, don't really look at it and don't know to look at it. And <clears throat> it's, it's night and day. It, that's yeah. why, that's why mm -hmm. getting out there and talking to someone, if you don't trust the suicide hotline, won't track you. They don't do mm -hmm. that. You're not going to get in trouble. They're not going to call the cops. They don't, <clears throat> I've called them before I had an act of suicide and I was trying to get someone to her and it's just, they don't do that. They don't do that. They, they track, they don't track anybody. All they do is the talking. They want it mm. to be a safe and secure place. So, but having a voice in your hour of need that can that can get you headed in the right direction, right? And uh, because it's so important to be able to find a relief valve for all that stress. And you, you know, Joel, um, I have learned so much about DOs and. All the times we've been together on the show and being having Dr. Clearfield on the show. And it just really, you know, I prior to, you know, Joel and I, we crossed paths, I guess, four or five years ago, something like that. And it's been a few years anyway. And when Joel started talking about hormones, I thought hormones for guys. I had I got to be honest with you, folks. Pardon me for being ignorant, but at least I'm honest. I did not connect hormones in males. I just didn't. I thought it was all, you know, for females. And right. uh, how many guys are like me when you come, when they come in and start talking about hormones, they go like, huh, you know, do you, do you get any strange looks or anything? No, I, I, I think a lot of men understand, but they think mm -hmm. that testosterone is for weightlifters. Yes. There's a, yes. Of, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and, and people mm. have no idea how much hormones are. Hormones are delivered via your uh, endocannabinoid system and mm -hmm. your cholesterol. So if your cholesterol is off, your hormones are going to be off, and vice mm. versa. So it's it's that's why people who take the statins or or lowering the cholesterol drugs, we believe that their hormones are off too. Mm. So. It's just, it's not a good sign. And then when you start to go down what I call the mental health, uh, the mental health process mm -hmm. can take a while. And sometimes you might get the wrong pills. Mm. And then you end up even more suicidal. Mm. And we believe that's happened a lot too. And then oh, yeah. a lot of the military are now on medications themselves even mm -hmm. on active duty and like i said we believe we've lost well over 150,000 troops now to suicide since 9-11 mm -hmm. 
absolutely horrible. And if we go by the 44 number, then that would be three, 300,000. So it's really bad. And the veterans, I. One is way too many. Yeah. One is way too many. So if you, and, dial, and it, if you dial the 988, then press one, you get the veterans crisis line. Mm -hmm. And if you go onto the veterans crisis line website, you, uh, it's got a call button. It's got a chat button. It's got a text button. It's 24 seven confidential and free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very, very, very important. And you know, Joel also too, when we talk about this, I, I, I'm kind of curious, uh, of course you mainly work with, uh, adults and stuff, but what about kids that are on, um, you know, medication because they have been labeled, you know, hyperactive or whatever they call those four initials, ADHD or whatever. I, I don't even know. Cause yeah. I would have been, if, if I was a kid in, in back in, in this day and time, like I was a kid in fifties, I would have been in that same boat. So right. um, do you, do you have much experience in that arena or much knowledge about that? Is Does, does that have anything to do with gut, gut health or, or, or do you, or, or do you know, to be honest? We believe one out of two children in America now is sick. Simple as that. It's because really of the food. It starts with the food, doesn't it? The food, the electricity, mm, uh, yeah. the tools, the toxins, mm. uh, uh, you know, TV. I believe TV is toxic. I don't oh, watch, yeah. We haven't watched it in five, six years. Well, actually, probably six years now. And <laughs> so that's. That's a sign of intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> we just it, It's bad. So a lot of kids are now on pills. They really wow. are. And it's really, yeah, no. they got a pretty bad suicide rate too. And oh, yeah. 18 to 34 years old. I think it's their, I think it's 18 to 34. I think it's the leading cause of death for their age group. Yes, it is. It's and, insane. uh, my, my cousin that committed suicide or what was questionable, the authorities never checked it out. Uh, what was questionable about his death was that the angle of the bullet into the, into the head was not pointing up. It was pointing down. Oh, wow. And that's a, uh, un, un, an unnatural motion for someone yeah. That's going to take their life. We know he was going to meet a man about some money or something about buying a car or something like that. And, uh, and uh, anyway, I don't want to get too much into that, but yeah, it, it just really floors me when a, a, per, a young person like that that has their entire life ahead of them and they haven't even figured out, you know, half the things they're going to learn in life to say, I can't live this life anymore. That is so horrible, and it is such a final decision in their young life, and it just really touches my heart when I read about that. Even though I don't even know the person, you know, it's just a, uh, it's a very tragic event because I know from experience when suicide happens in a family, everybody blames himself too. It's, yeah. only, it's perfectly normal, perfectly natural, but don't. That's where you really, if you're a, if you've experienced that horrible uh, death in your family, find somebody to talk to, please, please, please. Uh, I think I would have benefited from that, but uh, I, I didn't. And I encourage you to reach out and because uh, that's so, so important in it. Yeah. And don't think that you're going to have to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist. No, forever. no. Most people, they say, respond well to seven to ten visits. Mm. So it can be absolutely life changing. You know, oh yeah, that. yeah. Because like I said, my friend, uh, you know, Alan has his own uh, car repair shop. Uh, you know, he was always working. He's a workaholic. He's an owner operator, and you know, he's out there turning wrenches. And you know, he's uh, and I saw him the other day. He just there was just something about him, just like yeah. life was bubbling up in him. And I said, wow, man, you look great. What have you been doing? He says, 
I've been taking hormones. I went to a DO and he said, the DO put me on hormones and my energy came back and he says, I feel great. And, you know, you can imagine in a repair business, you're going to have headaches, you're going to have stress, you're going to have running, a, you know, things are not going to work as planned. And that all affects you. And, that, and that's true in all walks of life when it comes to working in stress and things of this nature. My goodness, it's a horrible thing. But just think in your life for someone that you may know, if they could get the their hormones, their body balanced their gut, their heart, and their brain to where now life is worth living. Think what a blessing and a gift that you could share with them just by sharing this show. Yeah. My goodness. And I wanted to throw in a plug because mm -hmm. I'm getting my license with a brain tap and I'm starting. I just did my neuro check today. Mm -hmm. You put these over your ears and these go uh -huh. over your eyes and they've got lights in there and blue of blue and red lights in here and they use binary beats hmm. and colleges, uh, professional athletes, professional teams, corporations, they're putting brain tap rooms into these areas for wow. their people to use because we now have proof that it works. It's hmm. like, forced, it's like forced meditation. So we hmm. could, we could rebuild, um, yeah. brain cell. We could rebuild gray matter. And this, uh, regulates your autonomic regulatory system, and it, it's just mm -hmm. my own. So I'm going to definitely be reporting to you on that. <clears throat> oh, yeah. We want to hear more about that. So when you put that on, very quickly, we've got about three minutes left. When you put that on, uh, is it like you the on the earphones there, do you hear sounds? or it, Just yeah, share uh, a little bit what to expect. Dr. Patrick Porter uh, talks into the... Um, into the uh he, he records it. it's a recording and it's mm -hmm. got music and sometimes his, vo his voice goes back and forth and they do that on purpose in regulation mm -hmm. with the lights and mm. literally improving the brain from the stimulates inside the out. brain huh yep yep yeah the mitochondria uh a lot of our my most of our mitochondria is in our brain and it goes you can see it through you don't keep your eyes open you close your eyelids and you could see the lights kind of blinking. Mm -hmm. and how long do you how long do you wear that at one time or do that session? Sometimes it's ten minutes. Some are fifteen. They've got a little over two thousand programs, and I believe they have seven for PTSD wow. for veterans. Mm. They have stuff for dementia, stuff for sleep, stuff for caffeine. Mm. They've got like caffeine ones. If you want to start getting rid of caffeine, you can do the caffeine one. And if you want to get rid of addictions, you can do the addiction ones. And, Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Uh, is that uh, do uh, medical insurance, uh, health insurance, did they recognize that as being part of the program yet or something is beneficial? I'm new to the training program, but I think someone recognizes it. I don't know if insurance pays for it, but I think they recognize mm -hmm. it. OK. So, uh, so if someone's got to buy that out of pocket, about what's the cost on something like that? Um. Seven ninety seven, and if you also purchase the yearly app, the app is like thirty bucks a month or one hundred and eighty for a year. <clears throat> if you go through your practitioner or someone who's selling them, sometimes mm -hmm. you can get a one hundred dollar off coupon. Hmm. So let me put your information back up there because I want you to be able to uh, answer questions on that. And, and we, do, uh, we do a neural check too. The neural check hooks up uh, clamps to your wrist, both wrists, and we monitor your heart rate variability. And we mm. show, we, we literally prove to you if it's working or if it's not working. Mm -hmm. And how did you, how did you feel after your first treatment there or your first 10 minutes or whatever? It, I, I was deaf. I did three treatments today. I calmer, just calmer. Wow. And, you could tell like the stress, stress went way down. Just wow. Way down. I've been pretty That's wonderful. I've been pretty, I've been pretty stressed. I'm involved with a lot right now. I've got mm -hmm. a lot going on. I might possibly get involved with a clinic of natural paths and osteo or uh, homeopaths and an osteopath. Mm -hmm. And one of our uh, Ayurvedic homeopaths, he was trained in Israel and Indiana. Real powerful mm. doctor. 
So we want to open up the healing center here in Reno, Nevada. We just might be close to doing it. And you're available to talk to groups uh, or speak to groups either online or in person or whatever. You, you can fit that in, too. Because think That's about, you know, having Joel speak at a group, whether it be online or in person. Oh, goodness gracious, because you can do so much now online. Uh, that's one thing. That's one good thing. At, you know, the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever we call it, you know, that's one good thing. It really burst it open, the digital network. It really did. You can get a lot yeah. done. Yeah. Well, Joel, we're about out of time. We uh, we may have to, we may have to we got to bring you back because you come on from time to time uh, from time to time very often I should say. Last week we even talked about earthing and grounding, and that's something that's very important. You might want to go back and catch that show. It was on last Tuesday. And Joel, our time is gone. I want to personally thank you for being with me today. This is a tr you sh you shared a lot of great information, brother. My honor and, and my pleasure. It's my honor and my pleasure to have a gentleman of your quality, your knowledge, sharing grassroots kind of basic information on how a person can get their life back. Oh, I love that. That's why we're here. That's, right. That's our reason. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our time is gone. On behalf of Joel, the professional patient, as he likes to call himself. And uh, we want to thank you for tuning in. Please, please, please share this show with others because you may be able to help them find hope and give them a reason to live. And on behalf of uh, Dr. Clearfield out in uh, Reno, Nevada, we want to give a shout out to him. Be sure and visit Dr. Reno, uh, Dr. Clearfield in Reno, drclearfield.net. And be sure and get in touch with Joel. The beard of knowledge, I call him there. It's email address, phone number. He'll be more than happy to help you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for tuning in. We hope you have a blessed day. Remember to love yourself first, then you can love others. Thank you again, Joel. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.